This is David. Many years ago, he was driving a boring minivan and just dreaming of owning a Porsche sports car. David wanted to experience the excitement of owning a Porsche, but the thought of expensive repairs was holding him back from his dreams. But how bad can it be and what are the common issues of each Porsche sports car made over the last 25 years? The 996 generation of the Porsche 911 and the 986 generation of the Porsche Boxster share many of the same common faults. Common issues with the earliest examples being roughly 25 years old include leaking spark plug tubes, air oil separator failure, water pumps requiring replacement, as well as replacing seen the thermostat. Ignition switches can go out and window regulars can need to be replaced. Parts for each of these issues will cost less than a few hundred dollars and all are possible to be accomplished by an amateur mechanic. The bigger issue for all 986 models and all non-turbo and non-GT 996 models is the IMS bearing. While the chance of failure has been somewhat overblown, for peace of mind retrofits can be installed. The rear main sill can also leak oil and may be something to watch. But a weepy RMS isn't usually too big of a concern and only needs to be replaced if it starts getting worse. Or if you're already doing work in the area, then it might be a good idea to replace it. Bore scoring is another big potential issue. A bore scope can be used to verify that there isn't an issue on a potential purchase. Bore scoring is more common in larger displacement examples, such as the Boxster S or the 996.2. With cars of this age, chain guides and chain tensioners may be due for replacement. This is especially true if when changing the oil, you find plastic bits in the oil filter or the oil pan if it's removed. All of these will end up having a higher cost of at least a few thousand dollars if you have a shop do it. And these jobs do tend to be a little more challenging for an amateur mechanic to complete. The 996 Turbo and GT cars have a Mesker engine that is known to be bulletproof. Well, except for a few things, such as coolant hoses that are glued, and over time the glue gives way, allowing coolant to spew everywhere. This can be fixed by welding or re-gluing the hoses back on. Unfortunately, this isn't a simple task and does require dropping the motor to get to all the hose fittings. Another issue that can happen is a spun camshaft and the block can crack. Both of these issues will require a rebuild. And in the case of a cracked block, you're going to need a new block. While only a small percentage will have these issues before having very high miles, it is always good to know the worst case scenario to make sure you are financially prepared if the worst does happen. Of course, no matter how financially prepared you are for the worst case scenario, the temptation will be there to spend a little bit more money because you want to add a bit more horsepower while you're in there. For the 987.1 and 997.1, the common issues are largely the same as the 986 and the 996. A few notable differences are that starting in the 2006 model year, the IMS bearing was changed to an internal bearing. This design made the bearing non-serviceable as the case has to be split to replace the IMS bearing. This bearing design did have a less than 1% failure rate similar to the dual row bearing used in the early 986 and 996 models. The 987.1 and 997.1 also no longer use spark plug tubes, changing instead to the use of O-rings. Now these can go bad over time and should be inspected with each spark plug change. 987.2 and 997.2 models overall have proven to be pretty bulletproof. There have been some reported cases of bore scoring, but this is still a fairly rare thing to happen on a 9A1 engine. With the move to the 9A1 engines, the IMS bearing was no longer used, so that issue is no longer present. For those models optioned with the PDK transmission, this could be an expensive repair if it goes out. This has been known to happen with $20,000 repair bills to correct the issue. The moral of the story is if you do buy a PDK, make sure never to skimp out on maintenance. The PDK is probably the best dual clutch transmission on the market, but a 997.1 Tiptronic will cost much less to rebuild or replace. So if you go with an automatic transmission option, you might think about asking yourself, are those lightning quick shifts worth the potential of a high repair bill? The 991 generation of the Porsche 911 and the 981 Cayman and Boxster have so far shown to be quite dependable. Although some of this is probably because they're not quite as old as the 986, 996, 987, or 997 model. Some common issues are the active engine mounts needing to be replaced after about 10 years. They also get some interior creaks, which is also known to be an issue on the 996, 986, 997, 987, but the quality of the materials in the 991 and 981 make you think that these odd sounds won't be an issue. The 991 and 981 does have a chance of bore scoring, but cases so far have been pretty rare. With the 991.2, the Carrera models reduced displacement to 3 liters and changed to a twin turbocharged power plant. 
Due to this, the standard 911 does have the potential of turbocharger related maintenance. The turbo can add some maintenance costs, but you can also easily modify it to add a lot more horsepower in. Who doesn't want that? The 982 generation Porsche 718 Cayman and Boxster have had some issues with fuel pump failures. They've also had turbocharger pressure converter failure, and some have had the problem with the e-brake not engaging. Fortunately for most users, their cars are pretty new, so they're still under warranty. And when you still have a warranty, you pretty much everything that can go wrong to go wrong. That way you don't have to pay for it yourself. The 992 generation Porsche 911 is also newer, so most are still under warranty should anything go wrong. Issues that have been reported in the 992 has been the ignition coil failure, engine mount failure, PDK transmission leaks, and loose front axle shafts. With the 992, life is still pretty good while it's under warranty. So the more that goes wrong while under warranty, the better. Of course, once the warranty runs out and you become the warranty, then you hope nothing ever goes wrong. Going into any purchase with your eyes wide open is always a very good idea. Often with a newer model, you're gonna pay a little bit more, but then items have had less time to wear. So you may not have to do quite as much maintenance as quickly. For me this time around, I bought what at the time was the cheapest Porsche 911 in the United States with a clean title and under 100,000 miles. While there have been some minor maintenance items over the past two years, so far it's worked out pretty well. And by spending less with that initial purchase, it leaves a lot just in case something big does go wrong. So now I'm on my fourth Porsche and just live in the dream. The thing is that Porsche ownership has its good side and its bad side. So check out this video to find the ugly truth about Porsche ownership.